half in the bag. I think in 30 years you'll look back on the David Gordon Green movies and think that he was a genius. Out of all the quality Oktoberfest beers out there, you get Sam f***ing Adams. It's literally the only one I could find. You know how many craft breweries make Oktoberfests and you get Sam Adams? What are you, f***ing stupid? Look, I went to so many, I went to one store, and this is what they had. Or Kareem will get the cap off because of my arthritis. Hey, why are you wearing that silly hat? Are you trying to be like the sheriff from these Halloween movies? What, who put this on there? What am I, a coat rack? Is Obama still president? Hey, did you hear they made a new Halloween movie? I bet Jamie Lee Curtis is spinning in her grave. Come on, let's go. Halloween Ends ruins the mythology of the Halloween franchise by barely having Michael Myers in it. It is the worst Halloween movie since Halloween Kills ruined the mythology of the franchise with that Evil Dies Tonight nonsense. Evil Dies Tonight! Evil Dies Tonight! Which is the worst Halloween movie since Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 ruined the mythology of the franchise by having a metaphorical white horse and even having Michael Myers talk. Die! Which is the worst Halloween movie since Rob Zombie's Halloween gave Michael Myers a white trash backstory and mommy issues. Which is the worst Halloween movie since Halloween Resurrection ruined the mythology of the franchise by having Michael Myers get his ass kicked by Busta Rhymes. Trick or treat, mother which is the worst Halloween movie since Halloween 6 ruined the mythology of the franchise with that cult of thorn BS. What were you thinking, Paul Rudd? Which is the worst Halloween movie since, ha <laughs> since Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, ruined the mythology of the franchise by not having Michael Myers even in it. Bring back Michael Myers, we need to see him do the same shit over and over and over again. Which is the worst Halloween movie since Halloween 2 ruined the mythology of the franchise by making Michael Myers and Laurie Strode be brother and sister, thus eliminating the mystique of Michael as a motiveless monster. What a franchise, what a legacy. John Carpenter is spinning in his grave. Great. That's great. <laughs> We're tempted to do spinning in his grave, spinning yes. in their grave like, jokes. No, that's perfect. Okay. That's, they're not done. that's why it's funny. <laughs> they're all spinning in their graves. Well, Mike, it's the Halloween season. There's a new Halloween movie out. It's definitely the last Halloween movie that they're ever going to make. I can't believe this epic saga is coming to a conclusion and that they're not going to make any more of these. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really like this movie and everyone's going to hate me for I, liking it. I won't because I really liked it too. What? It I might already, be one of my favorite Halloween movies. I've already got that I like Jurassic World brand on my face forehead forever. Hey, I'm, I'm with you on this one. Okay, but we, we'll, we'll talk all about it. We're going to talk all about this um, after the last two David Gordon Green uh, masterpieces. Masterpieces. Oh, man. I got peanut butter on my penis. Uh, this uh, was a very, very different film. And so if you're, if you're, uh, tuning in, or, or if you're going to watch Halloween Ends in the hopes that it's the final, well, it kind of is, it's the final showdown between Laurie Strode and, my, and Michael Myers walking around town on Halloween night stabbing people. This is to, it takes a totally different direction. Uh, and uh, and uh, so, spoiler alert, uh, we, we do recommend Halloween Ends. It's sloppy, there's, it's got problems, but we both enjoyed we it. We both enjoyed it. Um, we laughed a lot. Sometimes intentionally, sometimes not. Right, and um, uh, so there's that. So if you want to watch it, uh, wait till after the first ad break to go watch the video, uh, <laughs> to go watch the film or whatever it is, the <laughs> film video. The this epic conclusion to the David Gordon Green trilogy, Mike. Right. Which is the biggest problem, is that's how they were promoting it. Uh, the, 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 uh, we're in spoiler territory now. Um, everything about this was, yeah, the final showdown between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, the epic conclusion. Even though we already got a pretty satisfying showdown in the 
Halloween 2018. Right. That was like a singular movie. I think I said that when it came out. Like, yeah, they have an idea. Uh, they kind of reverse the roles of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. She's a, more of the aggressor. Uh, she's the stalker. There's lots of shots that parallel the first movie, but now it's with Laurie instead of him. Boom. That's your idea. That's your movie. Got it. Um, but of course, that was a very successful movie. So here come the sequels. Halloween Kills. Dog shit. Now he's turning us into monsters. Confusing nonsense. Oh, that, that's a mess. <laughs> So I did not have high hopes for this movie, and they were promoting it. Everything in the promotion for this movie is based on the tacked-on final 15 minutes of this film. Yes. Which has almost nothing to do with the rest of the story. And it's the worst part of the movie, even though on its own, it's kind of schlocky and funny. No! but it feels disconnected from everything else. Yeah, I, I saw, I didn't see the trailer, I didn't see anything. I saw maybe a, like a 10 second TV ad or something. Like, I, I remember seeing her like, ah, I'm gonna get you. And, and like, it's, it's all promoted. Michael by Myers, them. yeah. The posters, the two of them back to back. This is the wonderful balance of, uh, a wonderful example of the balance of, of people wanting more of the same, complaining that it's more of the same, but then when they don't get more of the same, they complain. Yes, that's the that, that's why I like this movie it's, because that's the bal weird balancing act of sequels. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. You don't want to you don't want to go too far mm -hmm. uh, in into like you know Halloween three season of the witch territory. Well, you can go there. That's fine. No, no, that no, movie's no. great. Well, it's a standalone movie. It's it's fine. But as a um, sequel to Halloween, yeah. Yes. Um, but and you don't want to just you know make endless Jaws sequels where there's no like plot progression or you know you want a like a saga that that unfolds and uh, and as we've discussed many times before the Michael Myers movie is a standalone movie Halloween boom it's up there with Jaws it's it's a thing that killed somebody it's a one movie thing you're done mm -hmm. you're never going to make the empire strikes back off of any of these kind of movies right yeah. you're just going to re repeat the same thing Fred Nightmare on Elm Street mm. you repeated the same thing Forever, but they did it with some cleverness. Some imagination, yeah. Those, those movies are mostly pretty fun. And, and this, I was like, oh God, Halloween Kills was like, like you said, what did you say, dog shit? I think I said dog shit. Okay. Wait, don't let him leave! Oh, 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 Halloween Kills is something only Divine would eat. <laughs> No, it's literally like it was so bad. <laughs> Bafflingly um, bad. Bafflingly bad. Like 2018 wasn't great, but it was it was pretty good. It was there, okay. They were like stumbling and struggling to find some kind of um, like focus or yeah. or like theme with the with the sequel. Mm -hmm. Um, but Mob mentality, I guess. That's yeah, what they yeah. came up with, but it was executed so poorly. And we're seeing it everywhere with the. Black Lives Matter movement. Now he's turning us into monsters. I didn't really get any sort of like uh, heavy handed theme from this one. It has themes, but it was themes that the to themes me were, make it. Themes were apolitical. Yeah, well, they, they make it more interesting and tied in with the original movie in a way yeah. that works better than all the sequels. Because the sequels uh, are going all the way back to Halloween 2. John Carpenter, I don't know, what do we do? I'm going to get drunk and write the script. Uh, Laurie Strode and Michael Myers are brother and sister now. Oh, now he all now he has motivation. He just and that's saw what Return makes of the him, Jedi. That's what makes him boring. Yeah, Michael Myers with motivation is is uh, the exact opposite of that first movie. Yeah, and then it, every sequel builds from that. Oh, he's being uh, led by a cult of pagans or whatever. They didn't know what to do with it. They didn't know what to do with it. So this movie is like okay, uh, well the 2018 one goes back to no, they're not brother and sister. Uh, he is a mot uh, motiveless killer again. Uh, and Laurie Strode kind of keeps getting in his way. And that's the idea. But there is no deeper connection between the two of them. And then what this movie does that makes it more interesting to me is the idea of this evil being transferable or uh, contagious. I think they say contagious in the movie. And he looks at me. And it's not him. At least not in the eyes. Blank, pale emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. And, and because of the environment that has been 
kind of cultivated in Haddonfield. Haddonfield's like a character in the movie in a way that is, it hasn't been in the other movies. It's just where they took place. It's a castle rock of this. Uh, yeah, this like, universe. Like like early on, everyone's like miserable. They're showing like people are committing suicide, and like the the that that cloud of Michael Myers has hung over this sure. town, and now he's gone. And so people need another direction to point their anger at. So they they pointed at this kid that accidentally killed a, a small child that he was babysitting. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> It boiled it down to what is the essence or nature of evil, right? And, and I think Jamie Lee Curtis says it. She's like, it's, well, it's some kind of outside force that's attacking you or it comes from within. Mm -hmm. and, and then it goes to like the very nature of how Michael Myers was created, AKA the shape. He didn't have a name in the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, he did. The credits, they could just call him the shape because he's not a person anymore. Right. Um, he, he became e pure evil. Why? We don't know. And that's kind of what this movie examines. We, we get introduced to our main character, Corey Cunningham, Hi. who is a, a young, young man who's on his way to becoming an engineer. He's got glasses. He's smart. He's on uh, Halloween night. He's earning a little babysitting bucks. You know, yeah, he's a young college student working his way up, doing odd jobs. He decides to help them out babysitting, and there's an incident in the beginning. Again, we're in spoiler territory, so because uh, that was the fun of the very beginning. It's Halloween. We're gonna have a good time tonight. Yeah. Is I really was like settled in for oh, Michael Myers is in the house. Yeah. And I'm like I'm I'm gonna go to sleep. <laughs> and then he's walking around. Something crazy happens where he accidentally kills the kid he's babysitting. It's a horrific incident and it fucks up the course of his life. Yeah. But it still sort of has a connection to Michael Myers because there's this uh, uh, legacy of Michael Myers. This is a year later after the last two movies, and so there's just this fear of him. And the kid yeah. is pulling a prank on the babysitter. Uh, by making him think Michael Myers is sure, in the house. Sure. So that was interesting, too. That was like, oh, Michael Myers has nothing to do with this. Yeah. And it works as almost like a little short film in its own right. And it inverts with the first one where he kills a sister with the butcher knife and then he, this kid kills a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so his life is kind of like ruined from there, but there's all these like little, like, little moments of... Uh, you know, he has an alliterative name, Corey Cunningham, Michael Myers. He works at a garage mechanic, uh, junkyard mechanic shop, and he's wearing the mechanic's uniform. <laughs> and there's just like little hints that he's going to become the new Michael Myers. And his life is, is crap because people treat him badly because of the accident. Mm -hmm. And it was technically an accident, but it just... It, you know, it's nature versus nurture kind of thing, uh, which is mentioned in the movie too. It's like, what, what course does your life change and what events cause you to let the evil inside consume you? It's very like Star Wars, like the dark side. Uh, Follow the path. You're going down the wrong path. He even yeah. goes into a little cave, he's, kind of. He's like, he's like Anakin Skywalker with his <laughs> hair. And he's like, I feel the evil inside me, Padme. <laughs> I can't control it. Um, so the, there was like, like this, whoa, what's going on? I like this. Yeah. Show me how to do it. Get off! Michael Myers lives in a sewer. <laughs> He's been living in a sewer for five years. Well, I made a joke while we were watching it, because that's the thing that, that they, nobody really talks about with the last two movies, is that Michael Myers is like 65 years old. And, and he didn't die. Movies, he's still walking around slashing people. He yeah. has superhuman strength. It's, it's supposed to be a more grounded movie, but they're not. He goes and crawls into a sewer and just sort of lives in there like a, like a homeless man. Yeah. Uh, which kind of echoes, I think that's how Halloween 5 starts, doesn't it? He's like living in a little shack with this old man. I can't remember anything. Halloween 5 fucking sucks. <laughs> Cookie! Woman. Hooky woman. But yeah, so so having him be, and I don't know, maybe people are like, oh, Michael Myers, he's pathetic in this movie. It's like, that's fine. No, it's his, so great. His power is being transferred to somebody else, and he's gaining more power. There's the one, uh, the, the cop that keeps hitting on, mm. what's her name, Allison, and they lure him 
uh, Corey lures him down into the sewer and Michael kills him. And it's like he gets a little bit of a yeah. rejuvenation. It's like Darth Sidious and, and Anakin Skywalker. Sure. And, and Michael Myers doesn't kill this kid, mm-hmm. Corey. He, they kind of like work together almost in this strange like relationship. <laughs> it's great because you identify with the Corey character. He, he's just some kid who's trying to earn babysitting money, mm-hmm. and he and and his life goes off the rails. And the the interesting part with this movie is that all the victims are like horrible monsters mm-hmm. that you want to see get killed. They're bullies. Yeah, the the there's a little f- group of four high school kids that um, bully Corey, and you know w- the one character, the girl, is kind of nice to him, but I think she survives. <laughs> The one that gets ran over by the truck. Oh no, he st- smashes her head. <laughs> he stomps on her head. Yes. After she witnesses the <laughs> one like, kid. What are you talking about? He gets the blowtorch in his mouth. <laughs> There's some pretty gruesome deaths in this, which are like fun. They were making us laugh, yeah. They were they were like so gruesome. Mm-hmm. The DJ Yes. He that... smashes his head against the turntable so hard his jaw falls off yeah. and then his cuts his tongue out. The tongue's making the record skip, and it's playing one of my favorite songs by the cramps, so that made it even better. Once Willie get near. It's like your favorite song stuck in your head. So, so yeah, there's there's the 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 doctor, the uh, the doctor and the, the 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 slutty nurse who's sleeping with the doctor to get promotions. There's the four bullies. There's the horrible cop who's like very aggressively hitting on uh, what's her name, Allison. Allison, yeah. And she's like not interested. So all these characters, the victims in the movie are awful. Yeah. So you're sort of like in that weird position where you're kind of like siding with the bad guy. And um, and, and really Michael Myers just like kind of just out of power and dead in the sewer. Like, and this kid sort of just like absorbing his like evil essence because his life is just, he just can't take it anymore. It's just like one disappointment after the other. And then his relationship with the girl, and Lori's like, mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I sense the dark side in you. <laughs> I don't know if you should be dating my granddaughter. You're breaking my heart, Anakin. It was weird when she said that in the film. It was. Uh, no, it's all very, uh, I think I mentioned it while we were watching it. It's very Christine, another John Carpenter movie. The kid's last name is Cunningham, the junkyard, the bullies. Yeah, except instead of a car that's that's turning him evil, it's the pathetic uh, sewer-dwelling Michael Myers. Yes, and I was like, oh boy, I like the direction that this is going. I don't mind... I don't mind a really good passing of the torch. I think studio types get nervous about that. Yeah. Well, any, yeah, anytime you break from formula. The end of the first season of Star Trek Picard. Captain Picard dies. And then they're like, well, he's dead. Let's transfer his consciousness and let's make a robot replica of him. I'm like, oh, they're going to. Patrick Stewart's 96 years old. They're going to get a younger actor. And he's going to have the consciousness and memories of Captain Picard Mm -hmm. in a younger body, and he's going to continue on being the new Captain Picard. That's really, that's a great idea. Let's do that. Nope. Someone got nervous and said... Don't they never mention again that he's technically a robot? They kind of sweep it under the rug. (laughs) There's a couple little lines here and there, but let's make a robot that's just as old, Looks is just as in, uh, just as feeble, <laughs> and will probably die around the same time as his, <laughs> his normal biological body. Mm. So what's the advantage? I don't know. I, what? What? Uh, what, what? Why not use that opportunity to re- recast him? Mm-hmm. And you know, have uh, you can do flashbacks or have maybe have Patrick Stewart's voice in his head or something crazy. I don't fucking who cares. But this was the perfect opportunity to. Use Corey Cunningham to become a new Michael Myers, like evil. Like, this what she fucking Glory Strode says at the end. She's like, evil never dies, it just changes form. I've said goodbye to my boogeyman. But the truth is, evil doesn't die. Evil dies tonight! Evil never dies, it just changes form. And this, it doesn't change form. It <laughs> dies. <laughs> like, what? That, I'm sure that was the original intention of David Gordon Green's script. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind. But then someone said, we well, have to have Larry fight Michael. Yeah. Michael, who's done almost nothing for the whole movie other than be a catalyst for the story, which was fine with me. That was great. But then, yeah, he shows up at the end. They have a pointless battle, which is kind of fun out of context. It was funny. <laughs> We're 
we're in spoilers. I guess we've been in spoilers, but that that final shot of Michael Myers going into the comically large meat grinder was so funny. <laughs> and I don't think that was supposed to be. I think that was supposed to be kind of poignant, but uh, no. Just, I, I was very pleased with the transformation of a random character. Yeah, well, that's the surprising thing, too. And I think that's probably why some people were tur are turned off, is like, oh, this is the final chapter of a trilogy. It's like, why is it a trilogy? What does it matter? Um, so, like, the idea that, oh, we're in the last movie and we're being introduced. Corey's essentially the protagonist. Lori's like a side character. Mm -hmm. Her granddaughter is a side character, uh -huh. which is fine. So the idea in, like, the final chapter of this trilogy to completely shift focus. If Corey had floated in and out of all three movies and they teased it from the beginning, yeah. They, they're just talking out of their ass. Oh yeah, this is this is the uh, the, the, the most recent Star Wars trilogy. Yes. It was exactly. not planned out, That's nothing was, was planned. Was, right? <laughs> if this was planned, let's make a new trilogy, let's bring Michael Myers back and let's have him over the course of three films uh, slowly transfer his evil to this new character. Mm -hmm. For me it worked in the context of one film, but they, they got weak in the knees and didn't finish it. Yeah. They, they said, no, we can't do that. Everyone will be angry. They need to see Laurie fight Michael. I'm so, so fucking sick of this. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's to me, and, and so I, I, I read some comments, you know, because it has bad reviews, you know, no one's going to review this well, but comments were like, the ending sucked. And I'm like, did you not like the ending because they didn't go fully with this new plot line? Are you that smart, or did you not like the ending because there wasn't enough Laurie fighting Michael? I, I think that's probably it. Any, anytime you veer, like the fact that Michael is so like sad and pathetic in this movie, the fact that most of the killings are done by a new character, yeah. that's the, the idea of that uh, that that evil transcending Michael and and kind of taking over somebody else is what made this feel so fresh and interesting yes. for a Halloween movie. Because all the how many times have we seen? Yeah. I know you like Halloween 4, it's okay. As, as far as like a soft rebo reboot goes, it's fine. Mm. But it's just the same shit yeah. over and, and over. And this, this grabbed that Michael Myers concept and, and actually expanded on the whatever this is. The, the concept of evil as opposed to yeah. Why is well? No, we should explain why Michael kills people. Yeah. Oh, this is a bloodline thing. It's a cult thing. Like, who cares? No. Michael Myers is the least interesting character. He's a catalyst for for terror. Right. And that's what he is in the first movie, and that's what he is in this movie, even though he's barely in it. Yeah. And there are like the little love story between the characters. Like, Allison is now living with Laurie Strode in a house. Laurie bought a house, a regular house. Yes. Not a fortress. She's not paranoid anymore. She's happy, she's taking her Activa, she's going to the senior center, she's like, I'm not scared of Michael, even though he really didn't die in the last one, we don't know where the fuck he is. But I'm fine, everything's fine. Um, I'm telling my granddaughter, li live a normal life, mm -hmm. you know, be happy, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna work as a nurse, and then I'm gonna get my promotion. Oh, I got passed over for a promotion by this like airhead bimbo that's fucking the doctor, and she knows it. Yeah. And, and she, so she's like, fuck, she's, she's getting fed up with the town. She keeps getting hit on by the stupid cop. Yeah. She, people are gross and awful here. And so she starts to side with the loner outsider. You, you, you could know. see her very easily turning into an accomplice an and accomplice. also becoming a killer. Yeah, and she, she's like, let's burn this town down. And yeah. she's like, I like the match. And then the techno music starts playing. They're riding the bike. I'm like, what is this? It was like Drive. It was a Nicholas of, Winding Reffin film. Yeah, I was thinking of Drive. And then, uh, which I thought maybe was just a coincidence, but they're driving around. They're listening to like synth pop music. Yeah. And then uh, he, Corey crushes that guy's head, or crushes that lady's head with his foot, which is exactly what Ryan Gosling does in Drive. Right. I was like, is this intentionally? This is like... Halloween meets Drive meets Romeo and Juliet meets it's Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's fine. It's no, weird. It was great. Um, for this far into the Halloween franchise, for someone to finally try and veer into a different direction, not including Part Three, only to have only to have the rug pulled out from under them in the last ten minutes yeah. by studio exec executives. I cannot believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I don't really care. I just, <laughs> in my heart of hearts, I cannot believe that he would have chosen to end the film the way he did. Yeah. I had, an, I had a thought watching this, and um, 
because because the the kid Corey is walking around with the Michael Myers mask and he shows up Laurie Strode's house. She does this weird thing where she's like, "I'm gonna kill myself." Nine one one. I'm gonna kill myself because mm-hmm. she knows like Michael's coming or whatever. Why'd um, she even call anybody? I don't know. Because the uh, what's his face? Well, Patton, the cop. He's like, we got a suicide call from Lori Strode. It's like just pre- if you're just trying to fool him, just pretend to make a phone call. I don't know. That was weird. I don't even know how she knew he was there. <laughs> whatever. But but so the Corey kid shows up at at Lori Strode's house and they have a little uh, uh, altercation. Did you really think I'd kill myself? <laughs> And then he's like, he's like, I want to leave town with your daughter, do- your granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, you can't have her. No one will. And he stabs himself. Yeah. In any case, he's he's gone, pure evil, and he's got the Michael Myers mask, and he dies there. And um, even I, I wish he would have just gotten shot. And, and like I, at the end of the film, they throw Michael Myers in a meat grinder. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then once Michael Myers just gets like shredded to a pulp. <laughs> Like then, his head bursts. Then you cut to Corey just sitting straight up. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Hard cut to black end. There's your sequel bait, There's too. Sequ- you can keep this going. But everyone will say, but it's not Michael Myers. 90% of this is a very interesting movie, and I was shocked because I was getting something I just totally didn't expect. Mm-hmm. And then you have this weird, like, uh, loner, weirdo, rebel guy who gets corrupted by evil and, <laughs> and Michael's living in the sewers and teaching him the ways of the dark side and going to transfer his, his evilness, which is like, I'm, I'm so okay with that. Yeah. Like, let let him pass the mask. Let him get a new mask. Which was fun. That was like, it was very retro in a way yeah. that's not like, I don't know, Stranger Things nostalgia overload. Yeah. It just made me think of like the, the endless slasher movies of the early 80s. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their look. For that one scene, he's got a scarecrow mask. I was like, ah, that's neat. Have Corey Cunningham as the new Michael Myers. I don't care. Like, Michael Myers is so old. Just stop. And, and, and the overall theme of it, though, was pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Like... Like a good kid who's just working hard, has a horrible accident, and people that sort of like fear or paranoia or like the way people are treated. Yeah. Well, that's, um, yeah, I like all the little side characters in this. The town, yeah. like I said, the town is, is really fleshed right. out. And like the idea of, yeah, the people need a new... Uh, a new scapegoat for yeah. their anger. Michael Myers is out of the picture now, so he's our new, we're going to vilify this kid. Yeah, there's no kindness or understanding from the town. They're just, like, cruel. And... I really like that moment outside the grocery store. Lori's walking to her car, and we have the, the lady from the last movie that got a fucking fluorescent tube shoved into her throat. She's still alive, and her sister resents Lori because Lori's still around and Michael Myers isn't. You are her neighbor? And you don't even know her name, do you? You tempted and you provoked that man when you should have left him alone. Yeah, yeah, they say at one point, uh, I think it's the DJ who says it. He says something like, your grandma riled up a man with some kind of brain injury or yeah, a problem. mental illness or something. Yes, and um, got everybody killed because she riled him up. Mm-hmm. Not, not just like it's clear cut good and evil, but he kind of comes up with a reasoning, you know, and, and so... What is what is evil? What is the nature of it? I, to me, the the bully teenagers were the evil, not Corey. Yeah. Well, Corey confronts the one about that. Yeah. Where he's like, "Your dad's an asshole to you, so now you're being an asshole to me." Yes. And then add on the Cor- Corey's uh, household. He's got the weird, overbearing mother. Mm-hmm. Oh no, no. Uh, who kisses him on the mouth? Yeah. And she's like, she's like, I don't want him seeing girls. Uh, you know, it's just a creepy, and so yeah, that goes into nur- nature versus nurture. Like, what, what, like, do you get fucked up by your upbringing, or just one specific event, or like a culmination of things? Mm-hmm. Does it snowball? You know, we talked about that during the Dahmer discussion. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that we're having like, like a somewhat thoughtful discussion on like the nature of evil based on a, a stupid movie <laughs> a stupid halloween movie the is, 13th is, halloween movie it's like it's like a, an amazing achievement yeah and, and everybody uh, hates it and everybody hates it and i like i can't just give it a glowing recommendation based on the last 
20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just, I was not happy with the fact that he died, Corey dies, and that we have to switch gears. It was like we were driving on a race car and they just hit the brakes. Yeah. We got out and then we went and got on like, like a slow moving bus. Mm -hmm. Like the race car was like headed towards the finish line and they just, they just pulled the parking brake and get, made us get out <laughs> and get on a tandem bicycle. <laughs> It's pedaled by John Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, why did you do that to us? You were you were out, you were ready to achieve. They, they were trying to have their cake and eat it too. We want to do something different, but we know what people want, so we'll tack that on at the end. Like I, I know, get it. I know. Went in a new direction. Introduced new ideas that to me are more in line with the spirit of the original movie than most of the shitty sequels. Evil, what is it? What is evil, yeah. It's a shape. Mm -hmm. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, good or evil, right or wrong. It has no purpose, it has no, th no motivation, uh, whatever. And this explored that a little. I, th I thought when he, they were in the sewer, he, he, he's him and Michael Myers are like wrestling. It just yeah, kinda, it's that a was a little awkward. It's a weird scene. It just cuts to them and they're just like kind of like fighting, mm -hmm. and it's very like like primal. And then he walks away, and I just thought Michael Myers was just gonna just die. <laughs> Maybe that was the original idea. Who knows? Just die. And he just wasn't going to be in the rest of the movie. Yeah, that would have been perfect. I would have been happy with that. He just dies. But Mike, he's an iconic movie that's villain. You've got to bring him he back. Sits up. It's got to be Michael Myers forever. Well, I guess that's not true because then they do kill him at the end. But it doesn't matter. They'll re reboot this in two years. Um, I'm sorry we didn't hate this movie, everybody. I'm not sorry. I don't care. I'm happy to have a new Halloween movie that I actually enjoyed. There are some really fun kills in it. It had a uh, yeah. I re yeah. Even on that level, this. like it goes. A, I like how long it takes before it gets to that stuff. It's like an hour into the movie, aside from the opening credits, before the Halloween theme kicks in. It's like okay, you built up to this. It feels earned. That's nice. Uh, um, uh, like I said, I'm sorry we didn't hate it. <laughs> yeah, we're not ripping on it. We 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 watch a movie and we say how we feel about it. That's all with no. No, like, agenda or any, any kind of motivation. No one's more surprised that I really like this movie than me, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 I feel surprised as well, but uh, it's bittersweet because I feel disappointed as well as, at the end. Someone needs to do a fan edit where the movie just cuts the credits right when he shoves the, Corey shoves the knife in his neck. If I can't have her. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to credits. <laughs> it still wouldn't be a satisfying ending, but at least you wouldn't sit through 15 minutes of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he, 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 he stabs himself. The daughter leaves, right? Mm -hmm. She sees that. He makes it look like Lori killed him. Yeah. The, da the granddaughter, like, says, Oh, my God, Lori, Grandma, you fucking bitch, I'm leaving. She leaves. So much of the movie is like a, like a family drama, like a misunderstanding family drama. But then Lori, like, kind of slumps to the ground. She picks up her gun just to double check she doesn't have a bullet left in it. That's when you cut the credits. <laughs> I was thinking for a brief second a when, when Allison comes in and sees uh, Laurie with the knife, I was like, oh, Allison's going to try and kill her now. Now she'll turn evil. Remember the end of Halloween 4? That was a solid ending where the little girl kills the, or stabs the yeah, mom. And yeah. now she's got the clown mask on. You thought she was going to be the Dr. Loomis man. is like, oh, no, not again. Not again. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a great ending, even though I thought the rest of the movie was just kind of mediocre. But that's a solid ending, and then they completely... They went out. They Push that aside for the, the fifth one. Well, now it's much worse. Now, like nowadays. It's, it's, That's uh, true, yeah. Before, you'd make a movie and put it in the theater, trick people to go see it with a trailer. 
and now everyone has an opinion. <laughs> anyway, would you recommend Halloween ends? I would. There's got to be people out there that appreciate the, the different take. And like I said, I think this is closest in spirit to the original movie as far as themes and ideas. It's not just Michael Myers stabbing people again. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say it's one of my favorite Halloween movies. Wow. Which isn't a high bar to pass, but <laughs> I also love Halloween 3, which that's people have come around on that one. It used to be everybody hated it because Michael Myers wasn't in it. And over time, people realized on its own, it's a pretty fun movie. Sure. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the weirder the Halloween sequels, the more I tend to like them. And it had some nice atmosphere. Yeah. That whole opening, like we mentioned, it's like a little short film or something. Lots of, uh, I, I just think of like Halloween Kills as being so kind of, and I guess it's partially intentional, but so like kind of chaotic and ugly visually. This one felt a little, a little classier. Yeah, I will 100% agree with you on all those points. It felt like a completely different filmmaker made it. Yeah. It just had this different vibe to it. I noticed uh, it. during the opening credits, there was, which the opening credits were cool too, by the way, the little pumpkin. Uh, yes. Pumpkins bursting out of other pumpkins, yes. kind of showing evil or whatever, continuing. Um, but I noticed there was, because the other two are Danny McBride and David Gordon Green, and they were credited as writers, but so were two additional writers on this one. So I wonder if they brought in a couple other guys to help them kind of polish it up and get rid of the terrible dialogue. There's no evil dies tonight in this movie. I know like bizarre asides. Made an arrangement with the Vietnamese folks at the restaurant and had them make you your very own peanut butter and jelly banh mi sandwich. Like where characters just randomly talk about things that have nothing to do with. Sandwiches for 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was the weird part where the guy was watching a Hard Target, John claude Van Damme movie. Oh yeah. Was that was a little was... odd, but. And then this little Whatever. cat jumps up on the... Yeah. yeah. It's just to establish that he's in that room because then they cut to the exterior. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I like the... Because David Gordon Green, a lot of his older movies too, he has these kind of little eccentric kind of side characters or yeah. shots or whatever. But with Halloween 2018, there was just like way too much bad humor. Um, and this one had a good balance of... It was eccentric in a way that worked, that mm -hmm. just kind of made the town seem off yeah. in, a, in an interesting way. Yeah, without being like super distracting yeah. in a horror movie. Mm -hmm. It's like, why are you trying to do something funny? What, right. what is this? What, this doesn't make sense. It's just a shame about that ending. <laughs> and I think we disliked the ending for the completely opposite reason why other people disliked it. I, I, I don't, don't know, know, but I don't know. Um, they, they, they had a chance for brilliance and they mostly mostly did it. Despite the fact that many people were disappointed that the old Michael Myers didn't just stab people again the whole time, the way this movie was shot and a lot of the details in the script are pretty good actually. It's a little anti-hero film about transformation and the nature of what makes people evil. A shockingly thoughtful premise coming right after the embarrassingly bad Halloween kills. <coughs> Let's talk about the general motif of change and all the symbolism. Themes of transformation are all over the place. The obvious one is the Catalyst family in the opening scene. The dad at the beginning is playing the piano in his mansion. Later on we see him playing pool in some filthy bar. Same with the mom and her downfall. The house itself visually is a symbol of negative change. and the piano keys is a motif that's repeated. So this is our inciting incident. What caused this? The little brat kid, that's who, and the other overbearing mother in the film. She warns Corey that her kid is scared of stuff and he wets the bed. Jeremy's been afraid of the dark. He's been wetting the bed at night. Turns out he's a mean little prick that loves violence, gore, and teasing people. Here's the first awful person in this town that's turned rotten. It's time to lock your doors. He's literally a little werewolf that changes form at night. He wears a mask. There are many indications of the importance of masks in this film, stemming from the Halloween theme, of course. Allison claims to, quote, not have a costume at one point. Do you have your costume for the party? I told you, I don't want to go alone. So I'm not going. Indicating that she's an open person who isn't hiding anything. 
Unlike her doctor boss and that shameful nurse, who ironically dress in their own sort of costumes at work, hiding deep dark secrets underneath. And at the doctor's house, their true nature is revealed. A monstrous pervert and a gold digging s When Allison finally does get a mask, her disposition and motivations change. So let's quickly talk about some visual motifs, parallels, and basic setups and payoffs. They set up the malfunctioning microwave that blows up food when you try to cook it. It's used later to startle Michael so that Lori Strode could attack him. They also set up the location of the fire extinguisher when Lori burns her Halloween pie or whatever. So we know it's there, and it just didn't come out of nowhere when she grabs it to beat Michael Myers with it before throwing a refrigerator on him. And also, Allison's car makes a rattling sound. It's mentioned many times throughout the film. So my car's been rattling. Rattling? Pulled you over because it looks like your muffler's about to fall off. Better get that fixed for you. I have a bigger problem with you. This is what Corey hears outside at the end, which indicates that he knows that it's Allison that's pulling up outside the house. That's what makes him stab himself in the throat to frame the Grandma Lori Strode and ruin their relationship. And one final act of evil. In the beginning, the kid throws a paper airplane at Corey. Later in the film, when Corey's in the abandoned house, Laurie Strode is there, rocking on the chair. She also throws the paper airplane. This is a callback to indicate that Lori really isn't there. She's inside Corey's head. Corey sleeps on the floor of the empty house in the exact spot where the kid died. He then dies in basically the same spot, but in a different house. His character's descent is visually and metaphorically displayed by images of him at the top of the stairs at the start of the film, and then the bottom of the stairs at the end. Now there are the obvious visual clues to compare Michael Myers and Corey Cunningham, but some of the more noteworthy ones are, Corey wears a mechanics uniform, just like Michael Myers. His name is also alliterative, CC and MM. In Halloween 4, Michael Myers steals a tow truck, and in this film, Corey uses one to kill people with. Also, in a similar POV shot from the original Halloween, Corey grabs a kitchen knife out of the drawer to kill his mother. When the dad of the dead child is talking in the bar about trying to forgive Corey, very prominently behind him are neon dice on the wall. Their numbers add up to 12. In numerology, the number 12 stresses the importance of ridding your life of negative energies, ending toxic relationships, leaving a bad job, and approaching all situations with a new optimistic attitude. Then let's take a look at some transformation clues. Now it's no secret Corey is transforming into something evil. It's the f***ing plot of the movie, but the script has some lovely subtleties in it. First off, of course, the pumpkins in the opening credit sequence symbolize evil, changing shape, or taking on a new form. There's a mention of the death tarot card early on in the film. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I got the death card. Now that just means a major phase is ending and a new one is about to begin. There's a bit of visual symbolism of him transforming from his regular pedal bike to a more powerful motorcycle. Oh, I'm actually getting rid of the bike, so if you want it, you can have it. I got a motorcycle. Which is given to him by one of the few people in the town that are actually nice to him. His dad or stepdad or whatever that weird looking pear-shaped man is. Corey also loses his glasses because they get stepped on by the bullies. Usually when a character has a change of vision in a movie, it's a pretty obvious metaphor for seeing the world differently. Now Corey likes chocolate milk. But in the film, he never gets to drink it. In the beginning, he takes out the carton, but doesn't get a chance to open it. And then he purchases a bottle at the gas station, which leads to the most important scene in the whole film. The moment that Corey finally snaps. I know who you are. You did something messy. I can't oh, believe they let you off. You're that psycho babysitter. Whoa, whoa, what the, whoa, what the whoa, fuck? Whoa. Whoa. He squeezes the glass milk bottle and it breaks in his hand. Now this whole scene happens right in front of an ice machine with a giant logo for something called Triangle Ice. A triangle represents manifestation, enlightenment, revelation, and a higher perspective. It is often used to mark the cycles of growth that lead to a higher state of being. Now Egyptians viewed pyramids in the same way. That's why they were used as tombs, a vehicle for transcending beyond the human form into something new and greater. Corey's cut on his hand is mentioned to be infected. 
Laura calls evil an infection. The suffering Michael caused became an infection, passing on to people who never even crossed his path. Allison says about his wound, Don't let it get infected. Then later she looks at his hand and just says, Infected. This is also no doubt meant to be a parallel of the Christian concept of stigmata and Corey's eventual crucifixion by the town's and Lori's ideals and paranoia. Now you see, Corey was always fascinated with transcending. He wanted to attend college and become something better. After that failed, he talked about the radio tower and reaching the top of it. And I look up at that tower, wonder if I could climb to the top. The radio tower is later seen on fire. The radio tower and its importance was also foreshadowed in Halloween Kills. This repeated theme or idea of the radio station and the DJ broadcasting also comes into play. It works as a metaphor for the external evil that Lori spoke of in the house. You know, there are two kinds of evil. There's the evil that exists as an external force that threatens the well-being of the tribe. The other kind of evil lives inside us, like a sickness or an infection. Corey is affected by the constant negative energy of the town, constantly permeating his brain. The bullies, the people whispering about him, and generally being ostracized. It burrows into him like an earworm, like a song, or like an annoying radio DJ. And once Willie get in here, it's like your favorite song stuck in your head. <laughs> Lastly, Corey dies by his own hand in a final gesture of a love that is forbidden. Laurie Strode, ironically in trying to stop evil, created it. <laughs> oh! Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm just waiting for Allison. Two ill-fated lovers, Corey and Allison, struggled to find their place in Haddonfield. They did everything they could do to fit in and live normal lives, but they struggled. Then finally, when free of their confines and allowed to be themselves, they get pulled right back down by the paranoid, mask-wearing, fearful town that is Haddonfield and Laurie Strode. Oh, and then Michael Myers pointlessly shows up to fight Laurie and they throw him in a meat grinder. The end.